Throughout their history, electric cooperatives have prided themselves on innovation, one of Touchtone Energy's four core values. As cost of producing and delivering electricity have risen in recent years, the focus on innovation has intensified. At Hoosier Energy, we're constantly looking at ways innovation and technology can help us in the strides we're making to improve efficiency and effectiveness. Let's look at a few ways technology and innovation have helped Hoosier Energy in its ongoing effort to improve cost savings, efficiency, and effectiveness. The Garmin Nuvi 5T is the Garmin that I use. I've been using it here at Hoosier for two and a half years. And before that, I would have to print out uh, five, six different prints just to get to the location if I had no idea where I was at. With the GPS, I don't have to think about that as I'm driving. It actually tells me where I need to turn, how to get there. I spend more time thinking about what I'm looking at. I use the uh, Garmin anytime I'm going in the field. And when dealing with the transmission lines, uh, a lot of the structures aren't roadside. So using coordinates helps me get to the exact location of where I need to be. Like the structure here, structure 265 um, from Victory to Taswell, we have a clearance violation where we need to raise the structure five feet. And we'll see the structure. We can export it into Google Earth. Once it pulls up in Google Earth, I can zoom in on that structure 265 and get the exact coordinates of that structure. We'll plug that into the Garmin have it take us right to that location. Turn left on North Fork Anderson Road, then navigate off-road. That was one of the big issues with not having a Garmin. The, the street sign for the road you need to turn on may not be there. With the Garmin, you know you've got two and a half miles, two miles before you're turning. So with the uh, street sign not there, it doesn't affect you and it actually helps cut down on my time of prep work to get to locations. I spend less time trying to plan my route to get to these structures and more time engineering the structure. The purpose of the low control program is to essentially shift peak usage from devices such as air conditioners and water heaters over to non-peak times. We started in uh, early 2008 and our actual first control session began June 1st of uh, 2010. When a peak time occurs, a signal is sent out by our low control system to the various AMI systems at each co-op that's participating. Those AMI systems then send out a signal across their power lines to units like this here, the DRU, that will then shut off the uh, appliances that are connected to it. Currently we have about 7,500 switches installed at 12 participating member cooperatives. They control about 5,800 water heaters and about 4,600 air conditioners and heat pumps. Demand reduction is about 7 megawatts in the summer and 5 megawatts in the winter. Our initial expectation was to find a low control system that could operate through Hoosier to various AMI systems. However, we found out that that technology wasn't quite available yet. So we had to go out and, and find a customized system uh, to, to take over that process. That worked out very well for us because GridPoint then was able to add uh, some professional expertise into the system and, and to make it a very easy and well-constructed program. We certainly expect our low control program to gain in popularity as more co-ops implement the low control function through their AMI system. I have always had an iPad for outage. So when I was trying to figure out how I'm going to manage things, how am I going to keep things organized, I started setting things up like you probably do on your computer. Uh, you got a file, you got sub files, and you, uh, I talked to, here's a project, here's my vendors for it, here's their POs for it. That's all right here for me. I think the guys that are mobile, moving around, don't always have the same office they're sitting at. They can use the iPad. We had uh, Heath Nork, Will Kaufman was some of the first guys to use it. Then it went out to a lot of asset managers, uh, some of our engineers here. Its ability to hold the information, get you the information, let you move around is what's really helpful. The fact that we came out here today and I could pull up and look at the schedule we're drawing, it, it really didn't save you a tangible dollar. It saved me from going back to my office. If I'm with a contractor, it saved their time. During an outage, and of course I'm working 10, 12 hours, it's going to cut off an hour or two for me if I'm not spending an hour running back and forth chasing paperwork, using up your time and having to get back to you later. We're using that 
effort somewhere else. So I wouldn't think that I saved you a dollar per se today, but I saved you an hour. Then I saved the contractor an hour. That time all starts compiling and at the end of the outage, if you're on, on schedule, on time, and you're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars by having this plant on schedule, that's where you're finally getting it. It gives me a lot of versatility I didn't have before. I'm able to take prints and copies of the contract. One version of the contract from URS to Hoosier Energy is 3,000 pages. So this gives me ability to take that anywhere, be able to access it in meetings, reference to it, and answer questions. Uh, being able to have drawings out in the field to look at is important. Another time saver is in meetings. I'm able to take it and type notes in it directly. I can pull up action items and agendas that are sent in emails, not have to try and print them off before meetings. It saves me probably at least 30 minutes a day in not trying to take my computer to meetings. Uh, it also allows me to keep a daily log electronically so it's not handwritten, so it's easily saved. This is an open area where you could get caught on a rotating piece of equipment. So we, we're able to document it, take a picture of it, and go back to the, to the contractor for their recommendation on how we get that fixed. Virtualization is a technology which allows multiple servers and databases to run on a single hardware platform. As you see here, these are our four VM hosts. Right here is a single server. We have a hundred of these consolidated into these four servers. We've reduced energy and cooling requirements by 96%. This is a single unit, low-end server. This is about $7,000. A high-end server can go as high as $20,000. Uh, we deduct the $150,000 for our VM solution. I would say that we've saved approximately $1.1 to $1.2 million in hardware costs. In addition to the cost savings, um, we've also increased reliability. In the past, if this server had hardware problems, it would go down and be unavailable. Um, today, this server could have the same hardware problems, but it will automatically fail over to the other three. These other three servers will pick up all the servers and processes that this server is running. And that's one of the advantages of VM. We're a small company with big ideas. Modern technology and innovation are changing the way we do our jobs. Whether we're reducing expensive power market purchases, lessening our environmental footprint, streamlining power dispatch, or reviewing contracts, we're leveraging technology to become more efficient and effective in our daily duties. This in turn increases productivity while reducing costs to members. So, whether big or small, we encourage you to communicate your ideas to help continually improve our business operations.